I wanted to run away, completely run away from my perfect life. And truly, I do have an amazing life and I always have, but there was something missing. I was that missing link because I hadn't taken care of myself. I had always put everyone else in front of me. I think so many people live there and I couldn't take it anymore. I had no idea who I was. I wanted to escape everything. And that meant walking away from the things I love the most. And that's a very scary place to be. And it's a place I don't ever want another woman to experience in their life. I knew that wasn't what God intended for me to do. And so literally I turned my life around and I looked at the journey ahead of me. Welcome back to another episode of the Beyond the Scale podcast. I am your host, Mary Catherine, and I want to start off by asking you a question. When is the last time you put all opinions aside and you just focused on yourself? You didn't worry about anyone else, about what anyone else thought, about it, what anybody else would say, and you made decisions based on what you knew and what you thought was best for you. And you didn't worry about anyone else. We care too much about what other people think. And we get so wrapped up in that, that we forget to take care of ourselves. We forget to listen to what we really need and what we really want. And deep down, we all know that we need to practice more self-love. Well, today's guest, we're going to talk all about self-love. And I'm very excited to introduce you to Lori. So Lori McAfee is the author of Burning Hope. She is an inspirational life coach, speaker, and host of the popular podcast, Get Your Rear in Gear. As a certified speaker, life coach, and emotional intelligence practitioner, she passionately assists individuals in rediscovering their inner strength and genuine self-confidence. Lori finds deep satisfaction in guiding her clients on a transformative journey towards self-discovery and fostering a profound self-love. Rooted in unwavering faith, and she dedicates herself to positively impacting lives through uplifting wisdom and an encouraging spirit aiming to make a lasting difference in every life she touches. So welcome, Lori, to the podcast. I'm so excited today. We have Lori McAfee joining us to the podcast. So welcome, Lori. Oh, thank you so much, MK, for having me. I'm so excited. Yeah. So Lori and I actually met, we are in a mastermind together. Mm -hmm. um, it's a mastermind that Amberly Lago put together. It's the unstoppable mastermind, primarily ladies and entrepreneurs, business owners. So that's how we met. And Lori just released a new book, Burning Hope. So we'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, but before we do, Lori, you are all about helping women realize that they deserve to take care of themselves and they need yes. to make sure that they find that relationship, that self-love for themselves. And so I want to first start and just I want you to educate our listeners on how you started on your journey towards practicing more self-love and what happened in your life that made you stop and think, okay, I, I need to get better about this. I wanted to run away, completely run away from my perfect life. And truly I do have an amazing life and I always have. Um, but there was something missing and I was that missing link because I hadn't taken care of myself um, I had always put everyone else in front of me. And so my life was a, a reflection of everyone else. I was always hidden in the shadows. And I think so many people live there and I couldn't take it anymore. But the problem was, is that everywhere I went, I was there. So I was the one that needed to change. I was the problem. And what I came to realize is I had no idea who I was. No idea. I had lost all connection with my inner being. Um, I was happily married, wonderful family, teaching Bible study to women, but I had lost who God truly created me to be. And was that like amidst after having kids and just like the busyness of motherhood? Or when did you really notice this? So I'm 51 and this happened when I was 48. Okay. 
So it was after my kids were grown, grandchildren, um, very successful um, business. My husband, my husband's a dentist. And so he and I have worked together for 26 years or so mm-hmm. and um, very successful. And it was after that, I just one day was like, I don't know what in the world's going on with my life, but I don't like it. Like, yeah. I don't even want to be here. I had found myself living in a place that was so dark and so dreary, but that was hidden behind a very white smile <laughs> because I have very white teeth. So it was hidden completely behind that and um, hidden behind everything looked really good. Mm. Hidden behind, you know, the success um, clothes, cars, house, all the things, you know, but none of that, that day that I wanted to run away, nothing in my life was important any longer. I wanted to escape everything. And that meant walking away from the things I love the most. And Mm. that's a very scary place to be. And it's a place I don't ever want another woman to experience in their life. But when we don't take care of ourselves and when we allow our ex, the external validation that everyone seeks, when we allow that to be our sole validation of who we are, then that's what's going to happen. You're going to eventually lose yourself. Mm. I love how you mentioned um, that you felt like you were living a life in the shadows. I feel like a lot of women feel like that, especially middle age, like we see this at the gym, we see women who they've had kids, they have, you know, their, their job and life's just, it's just been going on. It's just, Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's the same thing over and over and they're busy being busy. And then some of them, they have this pivotal moment where they feel like, I don't want to do this anymore, but I don't Mm -hmm. know how to move forward. Right. So I guess that would be my next question is, you realized that you were not happy. You wanted to mm-hmm. run away. Mm-hmm. What made you stay? What made you face it head on? How did you do it? I knew that wasn't what God intended for me to do. That wasn't the right thing. And so literally I turned my life around. Literally I turned around and I looked at the journey ahead of me, which was my driveway. Because when this happened, I was standing at the end of my driveway, MK, and I had walked down the driveway that day. And I was like, "Mm, I could be halfway across the country before anyone even realized I was gone. And I laughed about that. And when I think about that, I'm like, that is so twisted. Like what in the world? Mm -hmm. But when I turned around to come back to, I say to home, which was to me, to who I really was created to be, The journey was long, it was uphill, it was rocky, it was curves, and I knew I had to endure all of that to ever figure it out. It meant I had to get really honest with myself. I had to figure out the things I didn't like about myself. I had to listen to the words I was saying to myself. I had to quit lying to myself and other people. And I had to really learn what love was. Mm. Who did you feel like you were lying to other than yourself? Because, you know, you, you said you were happily married, you have Mm -hmm. kids, you have grandchildren, and I'm sure to them, and and I'm sure listeners can relate. Like we, a lot of us, we walk around and people say, how are you? And we just say fine. And we Mm -hmm. are not fine. Right. And I was actually just talking to, um, I had a podcast yesterday, uh, with, with Jillian from our mastermind. Mm -hmm. And we were saying how sometimes women, we get so caught up in everything that people ask us what we need and we don't even know how to communicate what we need. And so who else did you feel like you were lying to and that you had to almost like uncover yourself and take off that mask and say, you know, this is what's really going on. The man that I adore more than life itself, my husband. I had to get really honest with him. Oh my gosh, it was terrible. You know, the thing about it is, is I remember the night that that took place and it wasn't right after I made this turn around in my life at the end of the driveway, but it was one night and I had wrestled with, I had wrestled with God. Like you've got to tell him what you're going through. He knew something wasn't right, but he wasn't sure what was going on. And, you know, we've been married for so long. We just kind of went on with everything, you know, It was just easier to go on. And mm. I think that was the thing. But like I said, we really have a good, had a great marriage, but 
much better now after all this has been uncovered. And so what the, what I did that night is I, he was in his um, study room and I came in here and I was like, you know, I need to tell you something. And if this means that I am, that you can't forgive me for not being honest with you about me, who I really am, then I can, I can leave. Like it's, I have to have this peace and I have to have this freedom, which is more important than anything else in the world right now. And so is my relationship with God. And I have severed that because I was so mad at God for this place that I was at in my life. And I told my husband that night, I was like, listen, I have kept you from loving me. I have held you at arm's length the entire time that we've been married. I've not been honest with you about the things I say to myself, about the things I really feel about myself. I've hidden behind all this kind of stuff. That's not what I want. I don't want to be that anymore. I want you to know who I am. And I want you to know why I do some of the things that I do, which is baggage that we brought into our marriage. And some of that goes back to, I'd actually had a baby before we were married. And um, so I was 17 when I had her and then we met and got married. And so um, he adopted her soon after we got married. But with that being said, I brought in the feeling of abandonment. So I held my husband away because I was afraid that if he were to leave me, I didn't want to feel that. So I kept that so far away that it wouldn't hurt me. I had calloused myself to that fact. And like I said, I had hidden behind, you know, all these things. Um, And my husband's not, um, if you met him, you would have no idea really he was a dentist because he just has, he's, um, I'll just be honest. He's kind of like a little redneck. That's right. You know, (laughs) he, he truly is. He's, you would think that he were, um, He loves to cut wood. He loves to dig ditches. So all the stuff was not important to my husband, but he always gave it to me thinking that that would make me happy. That wasn't what I was looking for. And, you know, and I told him that night, I said, I want you to love me. And he said, all I've ever wanted to do was love you. And we were both honest with each other that night. We talked about things that we brought into our marriage and why we felt the way that we did. And some of the things that we had done to hurt each other that we knew that were, you know, not right about our marriage, like talking bad about each other or talking bad about to our, you know, the things that we do when we get mad or honestly, the things that everybody does really to their spouses when they really shouldn't. And we had, you know, so we talked about that and we talked about some of the things that the words that hurt that we've said to each other, the actions that have hurt, um, Mm -hmm. the not putting each other first and behind God, but putting our family, our kids or our, his business. And that was the thing is I never felt good enough. Um, I always felt like I was last in his life Mm -hmm. and he didn't do that intentionally. It was my, it was me that caused that feeling. And so I was hiding behind all these masks trying to cover all these feelings up. And I had to get my, I had to be really honest with him. And he was, like I said, very honest with me. And I said, I say that night we stripped it all away. You know, we, we, we got down to the bare essentials of life and what it meant to love one another. And I will have to say that was a pivotal moment in our marriage. And we laugh now and say, people wouldn't believe it if we told them. Um, because our life is, he and I have a great time together and I can tell him anything and he understands me and he can tell me anything. And we were even talking the other night and I was like, when's the last time we argued? And he said, I don't know. And I was like, that's scary because <laughs> I don't know if that's good, <laughs> but right. I mean, you know, I mean, it is, it's a, it's a good thing, but it's, it is, um, It's nice to be in this place in life where I can truly say I'm happy. There's peace inside of me, even when some of the situations in our life outside have been chaotic and they haven't changed. There's a peace about he that both of us because of where we got to in our life. But the biggest thing that I will say that we did is um, we made sure crisis center of our life. That's the first our first love. And from there, everything else flows 
from there. And we had, we had gotten that all mixed up and messed up and, yeah. you know, um, and we had been living on that Ferris wheel of life where everything's the same routine after routine, you know, and we just kept going and going and going and going until we finally had to jump myself mainly. And yeah. when I did that and I realized that I was in that place, that Ferris wheel of life, and I had held him out from loving me. I had to also forgive myself for allowing all that stuff to come in and to stay between us for so long. And I had to forgive myself for and extend grace to myself for the things that I had done to God in yeah. that. Look, there's so much to unpack. The first thing that I'm thinking of is, you know, I'm just trying to pretend I'm one of our listeners right now because mm -hmm. I know like, for me as a mom and I work with my significant other and we've gone through a lot together. There have been times where I have felt like you're describing, like my husband mm -hmm. is, you know, showing affection. He's giving me the time, but I'm not receiving it because mentally I'm somewhere else. Right. And I, I feel like a lot of people are like that. I mean, I have friends. I know we talk about it. It's like, we're kind of removed from the relationship mm -hmm. at times because we have so much else going on and we almost feel numb. And what I'm Absolutely. hearing from you is, you know, you, you felt that way, but you really communicated the way you were feeling to your spouse so that he mm -hmm. could understand where you were coming from. And then he helped you get through that. So I guess my question would be, you know, if you, for our listeners who are feeling overwhelmed by, you know, their daily responsibilities, their family, their work, anything, what practical steps could they take to start prioritizing their needs and be able to communicate that to other people? Well, the way that I did went about this is it, it was a process, of course. And um, it's, you have to listen to the things that you say to yourself. So I started listening to that so they could listen to the words that they say to their self, because we all separate that and we try to th think that we don't think that we're not good enough, but we do. We really feel like we're not good enough. We're never going to measure up. There are things that, you know, we can't be that mom that looks perfect on social media or that mom that the kids are, you know, these amazing vacations that they take their children on or these amazing play dates or teenagers that experience life. You know, they, the parents give them all this to make their life so simple and so easy. And, um, and I've been, I mean, I've been there. I understand that. But I kept telling myself I wasn't good enough. Nothing I ever did would measure up. So I had mm -hmm. to listen to the words that I said to myself. And no, those aren't true. Yeah. So that's a practical thing that I did is really listening to the words I said. And I wrote those down. And I would go back and I would say, hey, this is what you're saying to yourself, Lori. So I would, this is going to sound so crazy, but I would imagine myself outside of myself. Mm. And I would say, Lori, this is not what God says about you. This is not truth. And I would challenge that, you know, is this true? Is this going to benefit you? And what do you want the outcome to be from these words that you're saying about yourself? Yeah. So I really challenge that. And, you know, and I would tell my husband, hey, I'm struggling thinking this. And he would remind me, you know, okay, go back, go back to the truth. Yeah. And then I owned my story. Yes, I had a baby at 17. Yes, I kept my husband outside of my love for years. Um, you know, I wasn't, I lived behind all these facades of life, this mask mm -hmm. that I'd put on to go here, I'd put on to go there. And I was trying to fit in molds in places that I was not created for. I tried to fit in in different places with different people that I would never fit into because God did not create me to fit into those molds. And so when I really owned that and I was honest with myself about that, then that was a pivotal moment as well. I really, really appreciate how you mentioned fitting into the mold. I just wrote that down because I'm finding that many people right now are seeking validation from other people, whether mm -hmm. they're good for them or not. And we're all craving that community and connection from friend groups as a mom, you know, I'm trying to find like other mom friends and people that have things in common and similar values. And 
whether you're a believer or not listening to this, you have to make sure that you're trying to fit into a group where you're not actually having to mold yourself to be anybody that you're not. Right. Like you want to be able to walk in and say, this is who I am. Take me or leave me. I love myself. I respect myself. These are things I value. And if you don't value those things, then I don't belong here. Right. And that's just, it's so, it's so hard. Like it's so hard when we are living in a world where we all want to be accepted. We all want to fit in. And just listening to you say that, I, I'm curious, were you as a mom, like when your kids were younger, did you feel like, you know, you were trying to find, you know, groups to fit into and, and it, it wasn't your, it wasn't the crew that you should be with? Or how did you feel in that situation? Because you said this went on for a long time. Yes, for most of, for most of the, my life, as a matter of fact, even back in when I was a teenager, yeah, you know, I would try to fit into, to, to places that I wasn't, they weren't good for me. And I knew that and growing yeah. and, you know, even good people who had good intentions, um, those still weren't my people always. And so, yes, I would try to fit into with this group and I couldn't hang or, you know, and, and I would try, I would, I would start liking the things they liked or, and I think we all do this. Yeah. We don't realize it and we're, we're not willing to admit it, but we all try to fit in and change our ways. You know, we may just because they're listening to a certain kind of music. Okay. I'm going to join in and let's, so I'll know these songs when we're hanging out and we can sing. Right. And Ta- have Taylor Swift, everybody listening yeah. to Taylor Swift. <laughs> yeah. I mean. <laughs> I've been a Swifty for years because I had, I had girls. So, you know, but I can't tell you anything she sings now. I mean, I really can't (laughs) because that's just not what I listen to, but, um, you know, or do things that people, I remember when, um, I have my motorcycle license, so I had my own Harley and, um, I loved that. But we would always find ourselves trying to ride with different people to be in a different group. And I was like, I can't do this. Like, (laughs) this is not Not who I am. You know, I can't do this. If we're going to ride, let's just ride. We don't have to find a certain group to ride with. We don't have to do that. And I like all these people, but to hang out with them day in and day out and, um, you know, tell them my deepest, darkest secrets. No, you know, that's Mm. not my people. And I wanted people who were of the same values that I was. And so whenever, whenever all, you know, throughout my daughter's lives, both of them, there were different seasons that we were in different places and trying to fit in with different people. And um, I remember specifically, and um, I don't think I've ever even talked about this, but there was a situation where this lady actually said, you're fake. And... She was right because Mm. with her, I was. Yeah. Because I couldn't be who I really was. I could not be who I was created to be. And, and I, so I was, she was right. And when I really thought about what she said, I was like, I don't want to be that anymore. Yeah. And what I kept finding too, is whenever I would think these things about myself and I would try to fit into this and I would try to fit into that, something would always say, you already have what you're looking for. Just slow down and look Mm -hmm. around because I wouldn't even notice the people who really wanted to be friends with me because that's not what I was trying to fit into. Right. You know, or I wouldn't notice the people who had the same values or the same morals or even liked the same things that I liked, you know, to, to be around or someone that had everything that I really liked. And we may not like everything the same, but it's someone I really enjoy being around. And we were of the same values. But our lifestyles may be completely different. Our likes may be completely different, but our morals and values were exactly the same. And they totally aligned. And I can be friends with somebody like that. Yeah. And so I really had to adjust my life according to that. And now it's pretty much you love me for all that I am and you love me for all that I'm not. And yeah. that's pretty much the way I present myself all the time. Now there are times we all have to be a little bit above our game or, you know, depending oh, sure. on the situations that we're in. But for the most part, I'm who I am. 
all the time. Like you're mm-hmm. not going to meet me somewhere. Used to, here's what I will say. Used to, I would be one way kind of at church. Then I'd get with my friends and I'd be another way. I'd get with my family and I'd be another way. And I was like, this is exhausting. Yeah. Like I can't keep doing this. And so when I owned that and I was honest with myself about that, it was a game changer too, because I was like, I don't care. You yeah. like me or you don't like me. I don't care. You know, if you don't like me, you're not my people. Yeah. I, I was just going to say, I really like how you mentioned the story of the young lady saying that you were fake because um, I had a conversation with a girlfriend about this recently. We see a lot of people like at the gym, especially they are, and, and I want to get your take on this. So okay. maybe they have hung out with the same group for a long time and it could even just be family that they spend a lot of time with. But they've decided, and I know you've had your own personal journey with with losing weight and and your health journey. So they have decided, I want to start making some changes. I want to start taking care of myself. I want to start going to the gym, eating healthy. Maybe I don't want to spend my weekends at the bar. Maybe I want to, you know, make some real changes in my life. And what happens is sometimes they end up making that change, but they don't like how their lifestyle has changed so much. The people that used to hang out with them don't really want to hang out with them anymore. And they may make make them feel uncomfortable. So then they decide this isn't worth it. I'm just going to go back to my old habits. I'm going to go back to my old ways. Or somebody ends up committing to the new lifestyle and they lose all their friends. And then they feel alone and they feel like they have nobody anymore. And I know that you made some changes in your life when it came to your health and fitness. So what what would you tell somebody in that situation? Because it can be a very lonely journey and it can be hard to stay on track when you're alone. Right. So there's a difference in being lonely and being alone. Mm -hmm. And you can be lonely with those people that you're hanging out at the bar with or you're even hanging out at the gym with that aren't really your people any longer because their lifestyle doesn't match up to yours, even though you're working out together, you know, Um, I would tell them to stick with it, to keep walking, to keep doing the hard things, because when they come out in the end, it's going to be so much worth it. They're, Mm -hmm. they're going to feel so much better about themselves. Glad that they stuck with it. Glad that they were committed to it. And there's going to be a piece of a sense of peace and freedom that they've never experienced before because they've been able to withstand that. And here's the thing. I've lost very good friends over various situations. And I can love those people. And I can help those people. But MK, I don't have to invite them to my table anymore. Yeah. And that's okay. And Mm -hmm. what we fear the most when we decide to change our life like that is we've never been there before. So we don't know what it looks like. So when we start on these journeys of either completely um, turning our life around that pivotal moment in our life or our health journey or whatever it is, that we've never been there, so we've never experienced it. And that really makes a difference in our life. We're afraid of it. It's not comfortable. And we're scared of it because we feel safe where we've been. We know what to expect. It's predictable. So when we go back, we're going to expect the same kind of things. You know, when we go back, if we decide not to stay committed to this life that we really want to be, but then you, then you let yourself down and then you're going to get to the point where you say, Hey, I can't even trust myself right? because I can't stick to what I said I was going to be doing. I feel that I have felt that way. Definitely. Like when you don't stick to it, then you doubt yourself. Mm -hmm. You doubt like, am I making the right decisions? Am I, am I all talk? And then you start right. speaking that negative dialogue to yourself. So oh, and we have I, these expectations. Love, yeah. Yeah. And Lori, we set I these expectations how, so high. I love how calm you are when you talk about all of this. Like you just, you make me feel good when you, when you speak about it. Um, I want to talk a little bit about mom guilt and, and it do, mm. it doesn't have to be moms. Like, all women, we experience this quote unquote guilt when it comes mm-hmm. to taking extra time to take care of ourselves. And when I was on your podcast, actually, we were speaking briefly about the fact that 
in today's world, like more women are showing up for themselves and setting that example for their children so that their children will then think this is normal. This is mm-hmm. normal. And we need to see more of that. And, and I love that you mentioned that when we chatted because it had me thinking about my kids and my kids, you know, they grew up in a gym because I own gyms. And I know that's a little, un, you know, traditional, but they know that exercise and taking care of myself is a huge part of my life. And because it's a part of my life, I know that they're going to make it a part of theirs. Like they already, my daughter at five and a half knows what's a healthy food and what's junk food. Yeah. And she'll tell me. And so I love that. I love that she calls me out sometimes like that's junk food, mom. <laughs> and I hope that more people can normalize that. But what what would you say to the person that's like, I just feel like I can't commit this time to taking care of myself, whether it is with health and fitness or just looking in the mirror and saying like, this is who I am and this is what I need and I need to learn how to communicate that to other people. What would you Mm -hmm. say to that person? Because I know so many women are struggling with that, of just feeling worthy of the time to take Mm -hmm. care of themselves. Take the time. There is something in our day that we can get rid of that will allow us that time. Because whatever is important to us is what we do. So we prioritize those. And Mm. like I think I said when we were talking before on my podcast, being at the dental office all the time, I hear women say, it's my turn now to take care of myself. I've taken care of my kids' teeth, and now I need to take care of mine. Your kids aren't going to take care of their teeth either because they've never seen you do it, you know, and or I've been always been afraid to come to the dentist, so I didn't bring my kids. Exactly. You know, Mm. but that's part of health care. That's part of our overall care is taking care of ourselves, whether that is getting up a little bit earlier to make sure that you do get that quiet time in the morning, um, going for a walk so that you can, not only is that good you know, exercise for you, but it also helps you in your sanity, you yeah. know, to just get that break and get outside and that, you know, good vitamins for you, that vitamin D, that natural sunlight that we can be receiving. And I would just say, just carve out some time and don't get, don't get rid of everything. Take yeah. a small step. That, that small step in your life is going to lead to monumental moments when we take them. But just mm. like, and I'm not talking about self-care in the fact of going to the spa, getting your nails done, retail therapy. I'm not talking about that kind of self-care. Sometimes I just need to be quiet and yeah. be alone and sit quietly or go sit outside and look up at the sky. This is crazy, but one thing that I do is I will lay on our back deck and I will, I will watch the circus in the clouds because there's always, you can always make some kind of shape of something that's going on in the clouds. And I just ask, you know, what are y'all going to perform for me today so that I can just kind of <laughs> chill out? And that's, I know that sounds crazy, but that is just a peaceful moment mm. and just reconnecting, kind of grounding yourself, but also just that quiet time. So just carve out those small moments, even if it's five minutes, start with five minutes. But I would say, I would say to do it. I would say always, I'm one who totally believes in loving yourself. And I'm one who says that it's okay. Mm -hmm. And I know so many people are like, I can't put myself first. I can't do that. Scripture tells me I can't do that. Actually, it does. Ten times in Scripture, it tells us to love who we are. So it's okay. And out of reverence of who created me, I'm worthy. Yeah. And and so is everyone else. Because he created you for a purpose. And how are we ever going to do the purpose that he put us on earth for if we don't take care of ourselves? Right. If we continue to let all that hold up, hold us back or, you know, all the things that people have said to us in the past, you know, hold us back. Yeah. And five minutes, I mean, five, I know for me as a mom of two little ones, like five minutes sometimes can save me even this morning. So I try to get up before my kids, like I make it my mission in the morning to do that. But some mornings my kids will get up super early and I'm like, okay. We're all going to lay in bed together and have a a snuggle session. But this morning we were up really early 
and I made my cup of coffee. And even though everyone was already up, I said, I'm going to sit here by the fireplace and enjoy my coffee. Whoever would like to join me can join me, but I'm going to sit here. And mm-hmm. my son just sat there beside me with his little French toast and I'm drinking my coffee. And I'm like, I just, I just need a moment. Right. And then I was like, all right, now we're going to go get ready. We're going to pack lunches. We're going to do everything that we need to do. And my husband and I were joking just this past Sunday after church, we were arguing over who gets to go to the grocery store. And I said, it's really sad that going to the grocery store is such a luxury as a parent to go by yourself. (laughs) It's like, oh, please, I want to go to the grocery store for 30 minutes by myself without my kids. But, you know, sometimes like moms and, and whether you have kids or not, when we're so busy, it's like we need that time to ourselves and you can decide what brings you joy. And I think like that's the one thing is self-care is not like you said about going to get your nails done and going to get, you know, a facial. It's about having times in your day, five minutes, 10 minutes Mm -hmm. of moments that bring you joy, that renew you, renew your spirit and give you energy, not take it away. Right. So more than likely, most anyone listening to this has I don't know, 10, 15 minutes that they may be in the car by themselves. Right. And so roll your window down, turn the music up really loud, what you like to listen to. That to me is so nourishing to my soul is just to feel that wind blowing in my hair and the songs that I really like, whether regardless of what genre it is. Yeah. You know, if I like it, I just crank it up yeah, and just enjoy that time by myself. To me, that's self-care. Hmm. Well, Lori, I want to ask about all of the things that you have going on. So you have your life coaching mm-hmm. um, that you help other women with. Can you tell us a little bit about that? It's, um, and then you have your podcast. So right. I want you to talk about those. Okay. So my, um, my life coaching, what I do is I have a program that's called Beyond Enough. And that helps women, that walks through listening to yourself, owning your story, loving who you are and allowing others to love you. And you put all that together. And through that, we also talk about our values and what are our values and aligning our values with our life and learning how to fully embrace and experience life. That means to be fully present in every situation because there's going to be a day that there's, you're going to wish that you had listened to what that person said. And when we allow ourselves to put our phones up, to quiet our minds, not to be thinking about what that person, what, how we're going to respond or how we're going to one up them or how we're going to question, just thinking, just listening to that person, giving that person that space, that's huge. Yes. And that is fully embracing life, you know, taking those moments. And so we go through that entire process and transformationally, I have seen so many women come out on the other side. Um, one of my clients, I'll tell you about really quickly, we went through this process. And so she calls me one day and she's like, Hey, I have to meet my ex-husband. And she was in the process of losing weight during this time. I am not a health coach, but, but what we decided is that she had never been small. So mm-hmm. she didn't know what that looked like. So mm-hmm. to lose weight for her was different. So we, we talked about, you know, what was holding her back and it was her value. You know, I, I don't think I'm worthy. So when we yeah. worked through that, she calls, she's like, Hey, I got to meet my ex-husband and we have to meet at the bank. And I was like, okay. So we kind of talked through some things and she said, I'm going to walk in that bank. Like I own it. And I said, that's <laughs> yes, right. You, go, girl. you are. And that's what we say now is like, I own the bank. And that's because that's the kind of person you want to show up as is you're confident in who you are, regardless of where you are in your life right now, moving toward the person God created you to be, but you're, you're confident in who you are, where you are right now. Hmm. And so that's the process kind of that I go through with beyond enough. And then, um, my podcast is get your rear in gear with Lori. And so it just talks about life, just, um, different things that we do throughout life and how to help you to navigate um, different parts in lives. And sometimes I just talk, um, just talk about different topics that, you know, come up for the day or come up for the week or um, something that somebody's mentioned to me. And I'm like, Hey, I'll, I'll dive a little deeper into this. And so 
um, it just kind of helps people really, um, it's an escape for a lot of people so that they can listen to something, but yet it's so relatable because I just talk about life. Yeah. Well, that's, it's very unscripted. (laughs) Yeah. Well, we will, we will share, um, that in our show notes. So for all of you listeners who want to check out her podcast, definitely do that. And then last thing I want to ask you about is burning hope, which I am almost finished. This is so good. But I learned yesterday from a friend that this is a personal story to some extent, correct? It is. It is. It's a snippet of a true story. Okay. So the true story is um, my youngest daughter met her husband at an accident. My daughter saved someone's life. And Mm -hmm. her husband was the fireman that landed the Life Force helicopter. And so they saw each other. They kind of knew each other because of school um, when they were younger, but never really connected. And um, he always had his eye on her, even in school when she didn't even know it. And so that kind of is a funny thing to me, but just a side note. Um, But one day he actually walked into our dental practice and she was sitting, standing there. And she was like, that's him. That's the fireman. I was like, well, yeah, I mean that's him. Like, I know who he is. And she was like, no, that's him. You don't understand. I was like, oh, I get it now. I totally get what you're talking about. (laughs) So when they started dating, I was like, y'all are living my New York Times bestseller. They're like, you're kidding. You know, what are you talking about? And I said, one day I'm going to write a book that is going to be this story because to me, the way they met was so, um, powerful yet twisted yet, unexpected. Um, and there were, there's so many layers to this and the book kind of depicts some of that, but the the book is not parallel. It is Mm -hmm. not a true depiction of life. Um, but there's a lot of it that is, and not only that, but in the book too, it's a lot of my own personal life where there were times in my life that I blazed my own trail or I followed a flame. Mm -hmm. And so that's a lot of where burning hope comes from too, because one thing that I've learned through writing is, um, well, first of all, we all have a story to tell. So I'm 100% believe that people need to tell their stories. Somebody out there needs to hear your story and what you've got to say. Um, but you heal through writing. And so I've learned that too, during that process, Mm. but yeah, that's a snippet of a true story. That's so beautiful. And this is a little steamy. So what did it what is. did she think about you <laughs> writing some of that when it's like about her? Was she like, mom, don't write this? <laughs> well, some of that, like I said, it's not a true depiction. Right. So the the accident is the is not even is not even parallel to the to oh, the situation. Okay. So okay. it's not exact. Um you know, you can't make everything just exact. And what I tell, this is my, this is my philosophy on writing is I never let a true story mess up a good story. Okay. So I will, I will, I can take a true story and I can make it into a novel. Mm. Um, Well, for all of you listeners that are in like book clubs or you need a new good read, Burning Hope is really good. It's not like personally being in the personal development space, I spend a lot of time reading personal development books, which are great. There's so many fantastic ones out there. But when, you know, I learned that you released this book, I bought it and I started reading it. I'm like, oh yes, this is, this is a book that's going to be like, I can't put it down. This is fun, fictional, but it has that romance, which I love. So it's definitely, it's really good. It also has the underlying theme of hope. We yes. threw out it um, of that doubt and despair. Mm-hmm. And then we move into grace and redemption and love and second chances. And so it's a little bit of a self-help book yeah. that also is transformed into a fiction book. But one thing that I found, I have bookcase after bookcase of self-help books and I never finish them. I'm terrible when it comes to that. Me I never too. finish them. But you give me a good fiction and buddy, I'm all over that. I'm going to sit and read all day long. So that's what I wanted. I want you to be able to, I want to tell stories that make a difference in someone's life, that they can truly see their self through the pages Mm. that also helps them. But it's it's a fiction story, but we all can relate in some way or another. Mm. I had one of the guys I go to church with, he is... 80 something years old. So he stops me the other day and he was like, Hey, I want to talk to you about your book. And I said, (laughs) okay. He said, I read it. And I said, you read my book. And he said, 
Yeah. And I said, okay. He said, I see myself in one of those guys. And I said, you do? And he said, yeah. He said, that's the old me. And I wasn't very proud of that man. He said, but I wanted you to know how good it was. I was like, well, thank you. That's so sweet. It is. And I mean, but that's the thing is that we can all see ourselves in some part, it's some part in that book. Yeah. Oh, I love that. Well, Lori, this has been so great. And I know our listeners are going to love this episode. So where can they learn more about you, your coaching business? Where can they find you? So my um, website is lorimcafeecoaching.com. And I hang out mostly on Instagram. And my handle is Lori Mac Life Coach. And then, um, of course, my podcast is Get Your Rear In Gear with Lori. And it comes out every Tuesday. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Thank you, MK. 